So, hi, I'm Dave. I work for um, Nexinto, um, who do um, private and hybrid cloud stuff in Germany. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm from England, and in England in the 19th century, it was considered bad form to talk about trousers. People had them, people wore them, um, but if you wanted to buy a pair, you'd need to ask for a pair of unmentionables, which draws some parallels to a so a certain feature of a little UI library you might have heard of. So I'm definitely not going to be talking about React. I'm going to be talking about a hypothetical framework, Trousers.js. Oh, sorry, there's a typo there. It might be hypothetical, but it's still JavaScript, and we've got standards. So um, syntax you probably recognize. Um, you can compose components, and you can pass data down the tree via props. However, there are some types of data that you might want to make available to large parts of your application, such as internationalization data, access to your data layer, information from the URL. So to solve that problem, Trousers.js has a pocket. Can you see where I'm going with this? So um, the pocket runs down your render tree, and components can throw information into the pocket for components lower down the tree to extract out. And the way you add properties is you define a get child pocket method that returns the, the properties that you want to add. You then also have to define a child pocket types, unlike prop types, that is uh, mandatory. Um, and then, then you, you get, get that added. To access details from the pocket, you define pocket types. Um, and that is required on the end Make sure that you get a warning if it's not there. Um, and to access it, you can just use this dot pocket. Um, there's that you get an extra parameter for things like should component update and various other lifecycle methods. It's the next parameter after the one in the document. Um, um, and that causes that can be quite important because um, if you if your should component update returns false, obviously your entire subtree doesn't render again, um, which can cause problems if, you, um, if you've done something like a language change that has only changed something in the pocket. Um, and there's an awesome discussion of this on GitHub. And if you've got a spare couple of days, I can highly recommend reading through it. Um, so that should be an arrow there between. Um, anyway, there's some changes coming um, in 0.13. The pocket information is taken from the owner, which in this case, grandchild component's owner is um, my component. And in um, 014, um, it comes from the parent. So in this case, child component. There's a side effect of that um, that means that components that aren't created within the render method, um, so that don't have an owner, will also get the pocket information um, from this component. So I've just got one small recommendation. Don't use it. Um, it's effectively a global variable. It's undocumented for a reason. Um, it breaks updates, and it means your render functions are no longer um, pure function over state and props. There are reasons to use it, um, but try and abstract it away if you can. So I said Trousers.js was a hypothetical framework, but I wrote a transpiler. Um, that's it. Shout out to Dave King, who wrote the original documentation. That's it. Thank you.